Part 1 You will hear a conversation between Annetta and Charlotte, first-year university students, and Bill, who works for the Student Union Employment Service. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Now, let's begin. Answer the questions as you listen. You will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully to the conversation and answer questions 1 to 5. Hi Bill, this is my friend Charlotte. She's doing first year science too. Pleased to meet you Charlotte. Annetta told me you want some part-time work. Now. I just have to complete your details on the computer. Um, what's your surname? Johnston. With an E? Yes. J-O-H-N-S-T-O-N-E. I know that you live in the Heathfield Street student residence, but I can't remember the street number there. It's 126. 126. Good. And the phone number? Well, actually, I never give people that number because sometimes nobody answers or they forget to pass on the messages. So, I bought a mobile phone yesterday, but I can't remember the number. I think it's 0414847748. I'll just check. No, sorry, not 748. It's 749. 0414 Yes, that's right. I must try and remember it. And what sort of work are you looking for? Well, anything really, I suppose, though it depends when it is. I'd rather work during the day, if that's possible. How many hours a week were you thinking of? Oh, I'm not sure. Maybe about ten. But I need to keep at least two days a week free for study. Do you have any work experience? Not much, though I used to help in my uncle's shop when I was at school. OK. Well, I'll put it in, but we don't usually get shop work. What about gardening? I'd rather not. Everything I touch dies. What other kinds of work are there? Well, there's a, a lot of demand for house cleaning, fast food preparation and kitchen work and pizza delivery if you've held a driving licence for 12 months. I'm not sure. Can I have a look at the vacancies while you talk to Annetta? You now have some time to look at questions 6 to 11. As you listen to the rest of the conversation, answer questions 6 to 11. Bill, I'd like to change my job. You're at the Hamburger Express on the High Street, aren't you? What's the problem? Well, I never know what hours I'm going to work. I start at 7pm and I'm supposed to finish at 11pm, but sometimes they keep me until 2 or 3am. Yes, that is a bit late if you have to make a 9am lecture the next day. And the other thing is the pay. They're supposed to pay me on Thursdays. But they never pay me on the correct day, often not until Friday or Saturday. A few weeks ago, I had to wait until Sunday. 
They said their son was sick, so they couldn't get to the bank. But they're always making excuses. Yes, that doesn't sound too good. Would you be interested in pizza delivery? You need to have a driving license. Yes, I've got a license, but I think I'd like to change from working in the evening. Are there any day jobs available? Well, as I told Charlotte, there are several cleaning and gardening vacancies,、uh, and this childcare job that just came in this morning. Do you like children? Yes, I do actually. What's the job? Let's have a look. Collect the boy aged four from kindergarten at three p.m. Pick up the other two girls who are aged six and nine from the primary school at three fifteen. You take them home and look after them. The parents will be home by seven. That sounds quite good. What about the pay? It's the same as you're earning now: four hours a day, Monday to Friday, so twenty hours a week. You need to contact Mrs.、Uh, Alicia Thompson. Her phone number is nine one zero four five six two nine, and she lives in Springfield. I've never been to Springfield. I hope I don't get lost. Don't worry. It sounds quite straightforward. Let's have a look at the street directory. The Thompsons live here in Tulip Street. Number two fifty two. So you catch the six three one bus, get off here next to the post office in Daisy Terrace, walk past the post office to the corner, and on the opposite corner is the kindergarten. Then walk down Daffodil Place and cross over to the primary school. Then keep going down Daffodil Place to the corner and turn right. Into Tulip Street. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part two. Part two. You will hear the overseas student officer talking to some new students about the arrangements for an excursion to Ironbridge. Before you hear the talk, you have some time to look at questions twelve to sixteen. Now, listen carefully to the first part of the talk, and answer questions twelve to sixteen. Hello, everyone. My name is Pamela Sutcliffe, and most of you already know that I'm the overseas student officer here at Salopian Technical College. Next Tuesday, the twenty-eighth of September. We have arranged an excursion for all new students to the important historical town of Ironbridge. We are hoping you'll all come, because not only is the history of Ironbridge very important and interesting, but also an excursion like this is a relaxed and fun way to get to know each other. Ironbridge is about fifty-five kilometers from here. And we'll be travelling by the college bus, which holds forty people. If there are more than that, we'll bring a couple of staff cars as well. Though I might ask you to indicate on the list if you have a car and would be willing to take a couple of passengers. The list I'm referring to is up there on the student notice board. And if you would like to come on Tuesday, would you please add your name as soon as possible? By the way, could you please print your name clearly? I know some people have wonderful signatures, but often I'm afraid I can't read them, which can cause problems. So, if we need extra transport and you could bring your car, 
Can you tick the car column next to your name? Could you also add your student number and your telephone number, just in case there are any last-minute changes and we have to contact you? The other information I need to give you is about lunch. There's a very nice little restaurant in Ironbridge, which gives a 15% discount to the college when we bring groups. That means lunch is only about four pounds, and they do good vegetarian meals too. So it's usually no problem for those of you on special diets. But if you prefer to eat your own food, that's fine too, either on the bus or in the park. But I'd encourage you to try the restaurant. Now, talking of costs, I should tell you that the bus will only cost you ten pounds, and if you bring your car, we'll pay for the petrol. So you get a free trip in return for driving there. Will you please sign up by Saturday at six p.m. at the latest? The list is closed after that. We will depart at nine thirty a.m. sharp on Tuesday morning, so please make sure that you arrive at least fifteen minutes before, so that you can find a seat and get settled on the bus. Before the talk continues, you have some time to look at questions seventeen to twenty-one. Now, as the talk continues, answer questions seventeen to twenty-one. The college bus garage is behind the engineering workshop. It's quite easy to find. If you come here to the student union building, then walk east down the avenue until you get to the childcare centre on your left, and then turn left. And walk past the sports centre and the tennis courts, which are both on your left. Cross over Central Square, and opposite you is the engineering workshop. Walk around the back, and you'll see the bus. Please wear comfortable shoes, as we'll be walking around Ironbridge and be on our feet for most of the day. Wear a warm jacket. And you might like to bring an umbrella and a backpack to put them in if the weather's warm and sunny, which we hope it will be. But of course, we can't guarantee that. Certainly, bring your cameras and any snacks or drinks for the bus journey there and back, which should take about an hour and a half each way. You should all check the notice board on Monday, and we'll also put a note in your mailbox to confirm arrangements. So don't forget to check it. Now, why are we visiting Ironbridge? Well, Iron Bridge, as the name suggests, has got the original Iron Bridge, that is, the first ever Iron Bridge in the world. It was the birthplace of the Industrial Revolution, and for forty years it led the world. As Britain changed from an agricultural society into an industrial one. It's hard to imagine today that this pretty, sleepy little tourist town was one of the most important places in England for over a century. Just imagine, two hundred years ago, people from all over Europe and even North America came to Ironbridge to learn about what was then the latest technology. Today, it is listed as a World Heritage Site by the United Nations. As they consider the unique collection of industrial monuments, rank it alongside the Grand Canyon, the pyramids, and the Great Barrier Reef. One place that's fun to visit is Blist Hill, which is a reconstruction of a small Victorian industrial town where people are working and living as they did a hundred years ago. I hope you'll enjoy the day. It's been a very popular excursion in previous years, so I'm looking forward to going again next Tuesday. Now, don't forget to put your name on the list as soon as possible. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute.
to check your answers. Now it turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a group of students, Henry, Joe, Nancy, and Gordon, discussing changes to their work experience placement arrangements. Before you hear the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 22 to 26. The first two student arrangements have been done for you as examples. Look! There's the notice that Professor Jones told us he'd be putting up confirming the details of our work experience placements. But I thought that was already arranged. No, he said he'd have to check with the companies that the days we preferred were okay for them. Let's see if any have changed. Therese is not here today, but her name's first. It says the Uni Bookshop. Friday mornings starting on the 23rd of March. So, nothing's changed. I'll let her know. What about Manuel? He's not here either. Is he still going to the music store in the High Street? If it's mainly music, yes, he's still down for that on Friday afternoons starting on the 9th. Um, the day's different. It's changed from Tuesday mornings, but that's okay. I'll tell him. He'll really enjoy listening to music all day. Now, where's my name? Henry. Here it is. I'm going to the beauty shop, and I said I preferred Thursday afternoons. Oh, good, that seems okay. And my start date hasn't changed either. Joe, what day did you opt for? I'm going to Highway Hotels on Monday mornings. Yes, that's okay. And starting on Monday the 12th of March. Oh, has that been changed? Okay, I was scheduled to start the week before. I'll just make a note of that. What about me, Henry? Have I still got the Explore Travel Service on Wednesday mornings? Just a minute. Where's your name? Mm, let's see. Nancy. Okay, here it is. Explore travel on Wednesdays, yes, but afternoons and starting date is Wednesday the 14th of March. Has the date changed? No, not the date, just the time, which is fine. I'll get to sleep in. You lazy thing, Nancy. Chris's name is next on the list. Gorgeous Gowns Fashions. What a name. Yes, it sounds good, doesn't it? I'm hoping he'll bring me some free samples. So, has he still got Wednesday mornings? Yes, Wednesday mornings starting on the 14th of March. OK, I'll tell him when I see him tonight that his arrangements haven't changed. Gordon, what about you? I chose that software company that makes computer games. I can't remember its name, but I asked for Tuesday afternoons. Oh, oh, yes. Here it is. Games to go on Wednesday mornings. There's a note here saying they have their weekly staff meetings on Tuesday afternoons, so that wouldn't be much use to you. That's why they've changed it to Wednesdays, starting on the 21st of March, so you can see their working setup. OK, I'm glad they've changed it. I don't think I'd want to sit through a meeting every week. 
Before the conversation continues, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now, as the conversation continues, answer questions 27 to 30. Can someone remind me what time we have to get to our placement in the afternoons? It says here, mornings start at 9am and afternoon sessions at 1pm. Oh, that's a shame. I thought Professor Jones was going to change it to 9.30am and 1.30pm. Yes, he did say that he'd try to make it later, but obviously that wasn't possible. By the way, just in case, what happens if we're ill or something and can't make it? Do we phone the college or the place we're going to? I think we have to phone the company first and then the college. Didn't you get the information sheet about work experience at our last seminar? No, I missed it because I had to go to the dentist. What else did it say? Well, we have to do a total of 24 hours altogether, so if we miss one of the arranged sessions, we have to organise another time to make up the hours. And he gave us details of the presentation we have to give about our work experience. Oh really? What do we have to do? In week 10, we each have to give a presentation to the class about the company we've been with. It's 30% of a final mark for this subject. So it's going to be a lot of work. Yes, he's expecting us to do a lot of research while we're there so that we can outline the history of the company, its management structure, number of employees, other branches, etc. And he said we should use lots of visuals such as diagrams and flowcharts during the presentation. Yes, and we should also include what we did each week the different departments of the company or positions that we observed, and tried to relate what we saw to our studies so far. He gave examples like management style, accounting systems, information technology, and so on. You were right. It sounds like lots of work. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You will hear a talk from a member of the Conservation Society talking about green cleaning. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 34. Now, listen carefully to the talk and answer questions 31 to 34. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here as a representative of the Conservation Society to talk to you about green cleaning. In other words, about ways you can help to save the environment at the same time as saving money. I'll start with saving money, as we're all interested in that, especially students who are living on a tight budget. Probably none of you has sat down and calculated how much you spend on cleaning products each year, everything from dishwashing detergent, window cleaners and so on, through to shampoos and conditioners for your hair, 
And then those disasters, products to get stains out of carpets or to rescue burnt saucepans. I can see some nods of agreement. Even if you don't spend a lot of time on housework, you'd end up spending quite a lot of money over a period of time, wouldn't you? We can save money on products and also use products which are cheap, biodegradable and harmless to the environment. These I will call green products. Unfortunately, most cleaning products on sale commercially are none of these and many of our waterways and oceans are polluted with bleach, dioxins, phosphates and artificial colourings and perfumes. Also, think how many plastic bottles each household throws away over a year. They'll still be around in landfill when you are grandparents. So we often feel there's nothing we can do to make a difference. But we can. The actual recipes are on handouts you can take at the end of the talk. The sorts of ingredients I'm referring to are things like bicarbonate of soda, eucalyptus oil, ammonia, vinegar, lemons, pure soap. Lastly, many people find they are allergic to modern products. So for all you asthma sufferers, keep listening. Nothing in these recipes should cause you any problems. An end to itching and wheezing. Now you have some time to look at questions 35 to 40. Now listen and answer questions 35 to 40. So, let's start with spills and stains. Soda water is wonderful as an immediate stain remover. Mop up the excess spill, don't rub, but apply soda water immediately. It's great for tea, coffee, wine, beer and milk. As is salt or bicarbonate of soda, which will absorb the stain. Then vacuum when dry, and shampoo if necessary. While we're talking about disasters, let's quickly look at some others that can be avoided. Bicarbonate of soda is wonderful for removing smells, especially in the fridge. An open box in the fridge will eliminate smells for up to three months. And those terrible burnt saucepans, either sprinkle with our good friend bicarb again and leave it to stand, or cover with vinegar and a layer of cooking salt. Bring it to the boil and simmer for 10 minutes, then wash when cool. Much cheaper than a new saucepan. Then there are heat rings on wooden furniture. Simply rub with a mixture of salt and olive oil, or for scratched furniture, use olive oil and vinegar. Now, let's look at general cleaning. First, the floors. If your floor covering is made of slate, cork or ceramic tiles or lino, it probably only needs a mop or a scrub with vinegar in a bucket of water. Carpets can be shampooed using a combination of pure soap, washing soda, cloudy ammonia and some boiling water. You put a small amount of this mixture onto the mark on the carpet, rub with a cloth until it lathers, and then wipe off the excess. A smelly carpet can be deodorised by sprinkling bicarbonate of soda on the surface, leaving overnight, and vacuuming off the next day. Cleaning in the kitchen, bathroom and toilet is the next section. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.